All right. Well, Saturday night had some some great moments. One moment surpassed them all, and it's because of this man with the shades, Kevin Kroom, makes his UFC debut on super short notice, last minute, and submits Roosevelt Roberts in a matter of seconds. And I'm happy to be joined by the hard hitting hillbilly right now. It's been like five or six years since we've had one of these chats. How are you, man? Yeah, I'm doing. Uh, I mean, phenomenal. Obviously, uh, things couldn't be better. <laughs> Yeah, what a, what a story this is. I mean, what what a road it has been, a 13-year roller coaster ride. You kept at it throughout all of the ups and downs, and you finally made it to the UFC and delivered a performance like that. You're smiling. I'm sure it hasn't even left your face, but does this seem real, or has it been like a blur since Saturday night? Uh, I mean, yeah, like, you know, I mean, it's starting to sink in, you know, starting to get paid a little bit, so, you know, uh, that, that makes it a little bit more real, but, I mean, yeah, man, it's still just amazing. I'm on cloud 22, you know? <laughs> so I, I, I do want to go back a few weeks because you were slotted to fight Alex Caceres. And then like a day or two later, we found out that was no longer happening. And then I guess you were, I mean, temporary, temporarily released would be the right way to put it because you're right back at it. But right, ultimately right. you got your shot after all. But can you talk about what happened a few weeks back? Uh, I, I, I tested for the, the Rona. Apparently I had COVID, man. I mean, I had no symptoms. There's no, like, I felt amazing. None of the people, like, I was around had it. Like, uh, uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know what happened, but whatever. Uh, minor setback, it obviously was a roller coaster of emotions, but uh, whatever. Like, uh, I kind of, kind of used it to my advantage. I feel like, uh, I feel like this time I was back for the, for the first time, you know, like, uh, I'd already experienced a lot of emotions with it. You know, I mean, 13 years, I've been waiting forever for this. So obviously a lot of emotions with it. So I felt like I got those out of the way on my first experience. And then I was able to just really focus and, and enjoy the moment and soak it all in. Yeah, I was, I, I was, I was speaking to one of your teammates, Jeff Molina, after he got the contract yeah, in the contender man. series. And he told me like his whole corner tested positive. So we had no corners and then, I think yep. you flew out and then you were going to try to corner him and yep. then you tested positive. Like that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's rough. Crazy. It's rough. Yeah. Roller coaster. <laughs> so, so you get this other opportunity and timing works perfectly for you against Roosevelt Roberts. He was supposed to fight, fight Matt Frivola. Then on Friday morning, we found out that you were in, how did this happen? Like when were you given the heads up that you were in for this fight? Uh, I got a phone call. At, I was like doing medicals so I could get, get uh cleared to fight and uh i was like pulling into the doctor's office at like 2 15 on thursday got the call uh had to like finish medicals rush home had barely uh five minutes at home to grab grab my mouthpiece and whatnot uh ran to the airport as fast as possible got to the plane like 30 minutes before boarding uh found found my coach sat down next to james and was like who am i fighting you know what i mean like i, I didn't even know it didn't matter like like whatever uh <laughs> and uh i mean we still didn't even know like i still had to do medicals after i weighed in so like i left i left the apex after weigh-ins and went and immediately did medicals and stuff so like i mean i still didn't technically know like weighing in I, I was pretty sure i was a ufc fighter but i still wasn't sure you know what i mean like till i started throwing hands so <laughs> so when you were getting your medicals before you went to the airport and getting all those tests done in case something came up like did you know something might be happening or were you just doing that just in case yeah well there have been a few a few things like i uh i was offered a fight like the week the week after like uh, I, I got a uh, negative Corona test and I sent it to the UFC and then they called me that day and asked if I could make 45 in 12 hours and fly out there. And I said, yes. And uh, then, then uh, that fight ended up falling through. But after that, Sean, Sean Shelby said, uh, just stay ready and we'll get them in. So, I mean, I knew, I knew this was coming. I, I've, you know, been, been working really hard so I, I i knew it was about to come so it was just a matter of a matter of holding on and seeing how long seeing how long i could hold out before i ran out of money 
<laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, because you put out this tweet earlier this week that on Wednesday yeah. you had $64 in your bank account and you yeah. were trying to find a way to make it to 65. Like, is that, is that true? Like, what was that like yeah. for you looking at your bank account and seeing that number? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, Bob, I'm pretty used to that. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not that, not, not too crazy. Uh, I just, you know, my, my job, I work construction or, you know, I mean, I, I have worked construction, but, uh, so at the beginning of the summer, I had a nice little, a nice little chunk of change, but, uh, I fought in August. And so I took like a lot of time off of work and just lived kind of off of my savings. Um, to get ready for that fight and then i did well in that fight so i knew the ufc was going to be coming so i didn't want to start you know i didn't want to go to work i wanted to stay in the gym so i mean i just kind of lived off all my savings and everything and it kind of dwindled down and i woke up on wednesday and i was like well i guess i'm gonna have to like build a fence on friday or saturday and sunday you know so i could get a full week of training in and just work on the weekends uh and it turns out I didn't have to. <laughs> there you go. And now you're like, does it feel like kind of crazy that you're going to look at your bank? I mean, you're probably looking at your bank account now and seeing a lot more. But then like, you know, 30, 60, 90 days and that bonus check clears, you're going to have like $70,000 in $64 yeah. in your bank account. Like, are you prepared to see that? Yeah, well, I mean, I woke up today with more money than I made last year in my bank so like i mean that's pretty fucking dope you know uh so yeah i mean i can only imagine my sister sent me a message today and she told me that if i don't at least cash that out of the bank and make it rain in my bedroom one time she doesn't even know who i am anymore and uh i told her that's a really good point so i think i'm gonna have to do that with at least 20 grand when do you plan on doing that? And are you going to put this on your social media for the world to see? Oh, for sure. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Wait until that bonus check comes in and, and I'm going to make it rain for sure. So I, I had actually interviewed you years ago before your Shamrock FC fight in January 2015. It was one of the, like the first maybe dozen interviews I had done in my career. But the first time you really got on my radar after that was at the beginning of 2017, because I'm a New England guy, and you had a chance yeah. to fight Matt Bissett for yeah. the CES featherweight title. And you guys beat the hell out of each other for about 10 minutes until Matt finally finished it in the third round. Like, yeah. You must remember that fight, because Matt talks about that fight all the time being probably the most pivotal fight of his career that ultimately led to him getting a shot at the UFC. Do you remember that fight fondly? Uh, no, I mean, I don't remember it as fondly as uh, he does. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, man, I think, man, I think the world of man, I think he's spectacular. I love the guy. Uh, that it, it seems that we have a lot in common. He's a, he's an amazing fighter. Uh, he's got great taste, uh, you know? Um, yeah, man, it was a great, it was, it was a good fight. Uh, not my best, not, not something I'm super proud of, you know, but, uh, whatever. I mean, it's, it's an entertaining fight for fans, I suppose. I am an entertainer, so. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, but, I mean, obviously you would have rather walked out of there with, with a championship belt and, and a victory, yeah, but still. Yeah, I mean, I could have I could have just done things a lot smarter. I could have I could have fought a lot smarter. I'm fighting smarter nowadays. I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready then. It was, uh, you know, uh, it was a great fight. And yeah, I mean, I just, I just wasn't, wasn't ready for that level at that moment. You know I mean? He's, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete. So you took like maybe a year or so off after that fight. I think you were scheduled for something like two months later and then it never happened, but you yeah. go two and three in your next five. But then since that Bellator loss to John Teixeira, that's when things started to change for you. Like you finished crazy horse in the first round, you get a Bellator win. And then you had that win in August that you were talking about before all these UFC calls came. What, yeah. what would you say like changed for you? Because, you know, it's been quite some time since you've been on a winning streak like this. Yeah, yeah man. Well, uh, man, I started out young in this game with uh, a lot more balls than brains. Took all on all comers, didn't listen to anybody, thought I was the baddest man ever, flew overseas, fought savages that nobody's ever heard of, all this stuff. And, uh, uh, man, like after after you get beaten down a couple times, like that kind of will mess up your psyche, you know? Like, uh, and so, I mean, I just had a lot of self doubt. I was, I was, uh, fighting with a lot of self doubt, you know? I mean, it's just, it, it was just, difficult you know and then the losing streak doesn't help that and then so i took that time off i i, I moved from albuquerque to kansas city 
after uh, the Bassett fight and uh, took I took like four months off of training. Like if I wanted to go roll and do some jujitsu, I did. But I, if I didn't want to, I didn't. And like I've never done that in like the ten years, the ten years at that point I'd been fighting, and I just kind of took time off and tried to evaluate my situation and and figure figure out the route and uh, started training at Glory. And uh, I mean, long road still. Like I mean, I still had to overcome you know, my self confidence and and just trying to figure out how to do this whole fucking fight game again but uh even though i lost that macapa fight uh i feel like i just kind of learned some things and i gained some confidence uh, in myself again through that fight even with a loss and so uh yeah i mean uh i think just that's when my dedication i took that fight on like two weeks notice and uh, i hadn't been in the gym as much as i would have wanted to i had like had a hard winter and i'd been working like out of town to make some money. So I hadn't been in the gym that much. And I took that fight on short notice. And I just realized then, like after I lost that, if I wanted to make this a thing, I had to be in the gym every day, like no matter what, no matter if I was starving, no matter what, like I'm, I'm in the gym. And because my opportunity is going to come like that. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, I took a fight on a day's notice to wake class up. Boom. You know, so so it sounds to me like at one point in your career, I'm pro- it was probably several points in your career, you're at a crossroads where you're just like, all right, do I do I keep on this path and keep going? Because I'm sure you ask yourself at times like, why the hell am I doing this? Like, I, I feel like I'm doing everything right here, but it's just not happening. Like, you know, ha- what, what were those conversations what, like with yourself? Man, what's what's the worst is I, I wasn't I like knew I wasn't doing everything right. And I knew 100 percent that I was better than what I was what I was showing. Every time, man, like I, I remember after the Macapa fight, being with James and Grant and just like crying and just being like, hey, man, like I'm good at this, guys. Like, right. Like, I am good. Like, please tell me I, I should be doing this. You know, and they obviously were like, yeah, like, you know, we believe in you. Here, here we are. Uh, but yeah, man, I mean, it's rough. It's rough to to know how good you are and it's like never be able to to show that. Oh, it's tormenting, but, uh, you know, I mean, hopefully I think, I think in my last, my last couple fights, uh, my last fight in August, I just kind of learned some things and, uh, I feel like I was really able to show that I know it was only 30 seconds, but, uh, I, I came out and I mean, a lot happened in that 30 seconds. So I, I did really good. So when did you know, like, I'm, I'm sticking with this thing, like no matter what happens, like I'm staying with it, like when did you know, like that, that you were going to stay on this path? Oh, I mean, it's, you know, been off and on. <laughs> I have to reaffirm that so long. Uh, but like, I mean, I haven't had any doubt since, I don't know, probably last year about this time. Uh, things are going hard. Like I'd beaten crazy horse and I just didn't have any fights coming up. Uh, bills were coming up. Uh, I didn't have any money. And I had a conversation with Grant Dawson about, just man, I'm kind of losing faith. Bills are getting hard to pay. I, I don't know what to do. And uh, he just looked me in the eye and told me told me how much he believed in me. He told me that he he believed more than anything that I would make it. He knew it 100. percent He had no doubt in his mind. And uh, just like his belief in me, just helped me, helped me. You know. What was that walk to the octagon like for you? Like I'm sure you dreamt it up for so many years, a little different, you know, it's a little different with not having all these people in the crowd cheering and you're having, not having your family and friends, et cetera, there, but still the lights, the music, like you see the octagon and you're walking towards it about the fight. Like, what was that moment like for you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was amazing. I've, I've, I've dreamed of that, you know? And I, I think I, I, I nailed it. I, I wanted to soak it in. I wanted to take my time and enjoy every moment, you know, like I, uh, I've waited forever for it. So yeah. Uh, I killed it. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen guys make their debuts like this, especially in 2020. Like I'd say Justin James is like a perfect example. He knew he had to go in there on like a day's notice and he knew he had to make it quick because he only had so much gas in the tank. So like <laughs> when he started swinging them bolos at Frank Camacho, his plan was like, I'm just going to empty the gas tank right now. If I fail, I fail. But you know, if he falls even better, like, and the latter is what ended up happening for him. And he gets a huge win. Is that how you kind of approach this fight too? No, not at all. I mean, we kind of figured it'd be a knockout drag out thing. Uh, 
uh, you know, James Krause told me that, uh, you know, he'd be, he's come out, it would be a really tough first round. We were expecting he's really good. He's long. He's got a, a quick, quick punches, quick straight punches. Uh, we, you know, we were planning on taking our time and uh, trying to put it up against a cage and negate his length a little bit. And I mean, we felt like I had an advantage once I got a hold of him. Uh, and I mean, I, I feel like I I handled his length very well. I mean, technically, I guess I had longer arms, but uh, I handled the range very well. And uh, I mean, I couldn't couldn't have asked for a better performance. And then dropped him and then got a hold of his neck, and that's all she wrote. So this wasn't like a typical day notice fight. Like you were in great shape. Like you were ready to go 15 if you needed to. Well, I mean, I just went 25 like two weeks ago. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, like what, whatever. Let's go. What was going through your mind when you felt him tap? Like, can you even put that into words? Like, what? Uh, especially looking at your bank account and then like getting yeah. a tap like that. Well, like, what was well, that like? like? A a, I had a lot more kill left in the tank. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't ready. Like, when I, I got done, I just, like, stared. Like, me, Mug, James, we just stared at each other. It was just, like, nobody else in the room but me and him. It was just, like, kind of, like, I don't know. It was just, like, the the killer is just, like, fucking me mugging, you know? And then finally, like, I get done and, uh, uh, oh, man, it was just amazing. <laughs> You smiled, you roared like the rest of your team. You spoke to Michael Bisbing after the fact. You used the comb. It was really cool. And you mentioned Grant Dawson, how important he's been to you. You had a moment with him right after that interview. You guys just like hugged it out. And it seemed like he was very emotional. And it seemed like you were kind of emotional too. Like, did you just kind of let it out in that moment? Because not many people, yeah, not many people see their dreams come true in that fashion. You did like, what was that like for you and Grant afterwards? Because I mean, here's a guy that I've interviewed for years and he's been singing your praises every single time I talk to him. Man, I mean, 100%, I am here because of Grant. Like, I know I have a lot of skill and I've done a lot of training and everything, but in the last year working, like, pretty much solely with Grant, I have, my, my skill level has gone up exponentially. I've gotten so much better. And going with him really gave me the confidence to be like, hey, man, like, I am, I am good enough to keep this up. That kid will 100% be a champion. He is phenomenal. And, uh, man, I'm so happy to be along on his ride, and I'm happy he's along on mine. I think Dana White may be your biggest fan out of everybody right now. You blew him away. And if there's one guy you want to blow away, it's that guy. What What did he say to you when you walked by him after the win? Uh, you know, the big risk takers are the ones who get rewarded, you know. Uh, yeah. Obviously, obviously, I'm I'm pretty happy about it. I told him that uh, I loved him, and I've been waiting to do that for him forever. <laughs> <laughs> are you even Are you even thinking about the next move right now? Like, I assume with the momentum you have, the UFC is going to try to turn you around pretty quickly. But are you even thinking about that right now? Or are you still still trying to like smell the roses from this one, which would be completely understandable? Yeah, totally. I mean, I've been in the gym. Uh, I've trained like three times this week already. Um, you know. Uh, James is he's cornering somebody for contender series tonight. Um, he's cornered somebody on Sun on Saturday uh, for he's uh, Derek Minner is fighting on Saturday, and uh, he'll be back in the gym on Monday, and then we'll get together and talk business then. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'll fight anybody anytime anywhere. I feel like I'm in a pretty good situation right now. I don't necessarily have to take a fight, but uh, if something's right, let's go. What a moment for for you and Glory. I mean, you go from sixty four dollars to seventy thousand, sixty four dollars after that bonus check eventually clears. Just an incredible story. But what's the message for everybody who you know maybe in your shoes right now? Like for those who believed in you, for those who stopped believing in you, for those who thought that you were just living this crazy pipe dream. For James Grant and company, like what do you want to say to all these people that have in some way, whether positively or negatively, impacted this story for you? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I just feel like, uh, you know, like there's this lyric that, that just says like, I had no choice. I had to prove I made the right decision. And, uh, you know I mean? I kind of, I kind of feel like that, you know, like, like this has always been the outcome. Like I needed to, to live, to be happy with my life, you know, like the, the, the road I've taken everything all this time, like this is the only thing that I would be satisfied with. 
And man, am I satisfied. So, you know, I don't care if you like me. Hell yeah. Keep riding. If you don't kick rocks, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, man. Like this is one of the best stories of the year without a doubt. I, I couldn't be happy for you. I'm glad Thank we got you, to man, catch I couldn't up. have written it better. I couldn't have written it any better. It's, it's just amazing. You know? Yeah, this is a 30 for 30 someday. Kevin Cruz Let's debut go. in the UFC. <laughs> but man, five years it went by. And now, uh, you know, both of us stuck with what we wanted to do. We went through the grinder, made our dreams come true. So this is just Heck such yeah. an inspiring story, Here man. I, Let's I, go. I, exactly. Oh, what, one more thing. We'll change gears real quick just because huge fight coming up on Saturday. We got Covington versus Woodley. It's a big one. Who do you yeah. like in that one? Uh, man. Obviously, I, I, I like both of them as athletes. They're amazing. To be honest, I kind of want Covington to win. Uh, you know, like his whole day, like whether you like him or hate him, he's an amazing fighter. And like his shit's entertaining. You know, he's so stupid and like he's so outrageous. Like he makes me laugh. And like I get that he's annoying and he like also annoys the shit out of me. However, like he talks so much trash. And he's a savage. He goes in there and, and handles business. So I really kind of kind of want him him to win for, for just the entertainment level of the sport. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, obviously, you know, Tyron Tyron's the man, you know. So you know, I mean he's got a he's got a big a big uh, mountain ahead of him for sure. So you think Colby's gonna win? Oh man, I don't, I don't even like to say it, but yeah, I kind of want him to, unfortunately. All right. I mean, it's one, it's one thing to want him to, but it's, you know, maybe you want him to win, but then you think Tyron wins. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, a uh, skill level, it's really hard to beat Tyron, you know, it's, it's really hard. And, uh, you know, I don't think Covington has the power. I mean, maybe if he can stay away from, you know, Tyron's power, maybe, uh, maybe you can outpoint him and, and stay on the outside. I don't know, man. It's going to be a great fight. I'm excited for sure. All right. Fair enough. Thank you again, Kevin. All the best to you. Look forward to seeing you again, man. Thank you, man. Thank you so much.